enroll your child for the manifested e-learning platform and see their grades grow tremendously. These videos can be downloaded to a laptop for offline viewing or viewed from a smartphone in a course-friendly format. Hello learners, welcome to our today's science lesson. We are going to continue with the topic food and nutrition. In the last lesson, we introduced the methods that uh, can be used to preserve food because we learned in lesson one that it's important for food to be preserved for various reasons which we studied. In our today's lesson, we want to discuss the other methods, traditional methods of preserving food because learners, we said that preservation of food can be done in two uh, categories of ways. Uh, these are the methods that can be used to preserve food. One is the traditional methods and the modern methods. In our last lesson, we started uh, studying the traditional methods and we learned how uh, drying and, and, and smoking can be used to preserve food. In our today's lesson, we want to look at the other methods, traditional methods that can be used in food preservation. That is salting, use of honey, and use of ashes. Learners, welcome to the lesson. The subject is science. The subtopic, the, the topic is food and nutrition. Food and what? And nutrition. The subtopic is uh, methods. Methods. We are studying methods of preserving food. We learned that there are two categories. There are two uh, uh, classes of methods. A, the traditional methods and B, the modern methods. At the moment, we are studying the traditional methods which we listed in our last lesson. One, drying. Two, uh, smoking. Three, and this we covered learners. These ones we covered in our last lesson. We want to look at salting, use of honey, and the use of ashes. Salting is a method. D, use of honey, and E, use of ashes. Use of ashes. So, learners, I want you to uh, take out your exercise books so that as we writing on the board, you also write your own notes. So we want to learn how salting can help in food preservation. We are on point C, salting. 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 Now, salting is... Um, a word that you get from the word salt. Learners, salt is used to preserve foods such as meat and fish. Salt is used to preserve food such as meat and fish such as fish and meat. Now learners, the salt is applied 
all over the surface of the food. If you have meat, you apply salt all over, turn it, apply it completely. So, okay, so learners, the salt is applied. The salt is applied all over the food. completely you apply salt now the food learners may also be dipped in a strong solution of salt that means you can dissolve the salt in water strong solution mix water and salt in a basket or in a container then you dip in the food, either meat or fish. All right? The food may also be dipped in a strong solution of salt. The food, the food may also be dipped in a strong solution of salt. Just take water, dissolve salt in the water, a lot of it strong. Then the food that you want to uh, preserve, say meat and, uh, and, and or fish, dip it inside the solution. So learn us that salt the salt that you have either applied on the food or you've dipped in a salt solution, the salt kills germs, learners. The salt does what? Kills germs. The salt kills germs. Because remember we learned in lesson one that food goes bad because of being attacked by germs. So the salt kills germs by removing fluids from them okay the salt kills germs by removing fluids by removing fluids from The salt removes fluids from the germs, learners. It also removes excess moisture from the food. Salt also removes excess moisture or water from the food. It removes excess moisture from the food. Okay, and when that happens, it slows the growth of germs. Let me say, does slowing the growth of germs. It removes excessive moisture or water, it dehydrates. Dehydration means removing water. It removes water from the food. It's like just drying. Because in drying again, the sun, when you expose spread food, uh, on the, uh, on, uh, uh, the, the sun rays um, remove the moisture or or the water from the food. The water that is in the food, when you expose it to sun, evaporates. So learn us that is how salting can help. I've explained the foods that can be salted. I've explained how it is done, learn us, and I've given reason why the food will be preserved for a long time. Because salting removes, removes excess moisture from the food. It kills 
germs by removing fluids from them. So that is uh, salting. I've explained salting. How salting um, method can be can help in preservation of food. Let's move on to uh, D. D. This is use of honey. Use of honey use of honey honey use of honey now learners preserving food using honey is done by dipping the food into honey preserving food by using honey is done by dipping food in honey by dipping food in honey lana's honey is a liquid okay and uh, uh, if you want to re re preserve food using honey, they just take the honey and dip it into food. And then cover it. And covering. And covering it. And covering it. To keep insects and dusts. To keep insects and dust away to keep insects and dust away so you take for example honey in a basket fill it with honey or halfway then just dip the food into the honey you can have say boiled meat or roasted meat and also fruits, you can take fruits by dipping them into a basket of honey or a pot, a pot, okay? So lanas, foods like boiled meat or, or roasted meat or fruits can be preserved by coating them with honey. So when you dip it into honey, then it means that that food is submerged in honey. It means that it's coated all ar around by honey. So boiled, boiled what? Boiled or roasted or roasted meat and fruits. and fruits lanas and fruits you are saying boiled or roasted meat and fruits can be preserved by coating them with honey can be preserved by coating them with honey by coating them with honey lanas honey just like salt kills germs by removing fluids okay honey lanas honey honey lanas honey kills germs the honey does what? Kills germs. And how does honey kill germs? Kill germ. The honey kills germs by doing what? By removing fluids from them. The honey kills germs. By removing fluids from them. Remember, 
germs are very tiny organisms, very tiny animals. Okay? But honey will kill these animals by removing fluids from them like water or blood. Okay? The water or any other fluids that make them alive. In other words, honey dehydrates them. It also forms a coat on the food. Okay? It, holds, it also forms, it also forms a coat around the food. Okay? Around the food. It forms a coat on the food. It forms a coat on the what? On the food. And that, learners, that prevents entry of germs. And that prevents entry. Prevents entry of germs and also air. Because remember, air, air contains moisture. Air may contain uh, oxygen, which can support the life of the germs. But when that is prevented, there is no air from outside that can penetrate into these food learners. Then that food is preserved for a long period of time. So use of honey. Honey can be used to preserve food. Then moving on, learners, to the last method. Remember, we are discussing these methods. We've done honey. I've explained how honey can be used to preserve food. I want now to explain how the use of ashes can be used as a method of preserving food. This is E, use of ashes. Use of what? Ashes. Those of you who have uh, used uh, firewood to cook food, after you've burned the fire, learn us what you have, the remain of that uh, process is ashes. Now, ashes learn us have been used for many years to preserve Foods like grains, uh, maize, uh, grains like maize, beans, and so on. Ashes have been used um, for many years to preserve food. Ashes have been used for many years, have been used for many years. To do what? To preserve food. To preserve food. Learners, to preserve food such as, let me say, such as maize, grains like maize, beans, etc. Maize, beans, ETC. And how is it done? It's done by simply um, dipping the food into the ash. Okay? Put the food into the ash. Or the ash into the food. You mix the ash with the food. Now, the ashes, when you do that, learners, the ashes keep off pests. Okay? The ashes do what? The ashes keep off pests such as weevils. Pests such as weevils and small animals like ants. Ants cannot um, attack food that is mixed with ashes because ashes keep off 
the base. So ashes learners have been used for many years to preserve food. To preserve food, all right, ashes. So learners, that will mark the end of our today's lesson. We have discussed uh, three traditional methods of preserving food. Salting, use of honey, and use of ashes. We had earlier mentioned that there are five methods that were used in our communities to do what? To preserve food. In our last lesson, we discussed drying and smoking. In our today's lesson, we've discussed the salting, use of honey, and use of ashes. So learners, even though these methods were used um, in the olden days, the methods can still be used today. As I demonstrated in our last lesson, where I use drying methods to preserve vegetables. And I showed you examples of vegetables that I've dried in my house, learners. I've dried vegetables which I bought from the market when they were fresh. I just cut them into small pieces, then I exposed them into the sun in Nairobi. This one I did while in Nairobi. Then I went to the market again and bought some small fish. These ones are already dried. Okay, these ones when they were, when I bought them, they were already been dried. So this food, I've kept it in my house and uh, I can uh, uh, use it after a long period of time. I also showed you groundnuts. I bought groundnuts from the market. Learners have groundnuts here bought them from the market. These groundnuts have been dried. So the reason why learners, uh, you, are, uh, you, are, you are studying these methods is so that you can also use the methods at home or in your home when you grow up, you'll also have your own house. Please remember these methods. It's not a must that you use the modern methods. Okay? Because the traditional methods, learners, sometimes are more effective uh, than the modern methods. In our next lesson, we will discuss the modern methods. But as we will uh, discover learners, these traditional methods uh, can preserve food, some foods for longer period than the modern methods, like drying, because Modern methods may also have some disadvantages. If you are using modern methods like refrigerators, learners, or canning, you may also need to have electricity for the refrigerators. And there are times when we have power blackouts. When you have stored your food in a refrigerator and they are power blackout, then that food will go bad. But once food has been dried or you used honey, or salt or ashes or, or, or smoking, that food may be preserved for a longer period of time. So learners is good that you are learning. The reason why you are learning is so that you can uh, apply some of these methods in the preservation of food. And in our first lesson, we explained why it's important to preserve food. Food preservation is our subtopic in the topic food and nutrition. So thank you for attending our today's lesson. I want to give you a revision question, just one question, which I expect you to do before you attend our next lesson. This is your revision question, just one question. One question, learners, explain Explain how each of the following methods help to preserve food. Roman 1, salting. Roman 2, use of honey. Roman 3, Roman 3, use of ashes. Learners, when answering the questions, don't copy from the notes. Make sure your exercise book is closed. Try and 
answer the question from your memory. In case you are not able to answer from your memory, please, you, that is when you can now refer to the notes. So refer to the notes once more, then answer the question when the exercise book is closed. If you are unable to answer the question a uh, second time, please don't give up. Go back and read the notes, then answer from your memory. So you do that until you are able to answer the questions from your mind. Because we learn by repetition. You don't just study once. No. If you are not able to get it once, then do it again. Then after one week, learn us, or after three days, try and answer the question again without looking at the notes. If you do that, learn us. That's how you learn. You have to do revision. Don't just say, I have finished the syllabus. No. Go back. And again, there are, this, is, this subject is known as science. What we are learning here, you need to apply at home like preserving food. Learners try and preserve these foods uh, because like drying, you don't need money. You just need the food to put it in the sun. So I want you to be uh, also trying what you are learning here to apply at home. The reason why you are at school, learners, is because the knowledge you get at school should also help your family, you help your parents, okay? Help your parents to preserve food especially when you have plenty of food. For example, you've done harvesting. Learners, you can uh, remind your, your guardian, your brothers, your older sisters, that there are methods that can be used to preserve food. So thank you for attending our today's lesson. In our next lesson, we are going to discuss the modern methods of preserving food. Bye-bye. Thank you for choosing to study with us. For more information, you can call us on 0724 173845.